Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name is Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So if you've seen some of my recent videos, you know I've been doing some reviews and different crafting projects using this tool called Draft Top. And I've said this before, but these are not sponsored videos, these are just my opinions. But basically this tool is made to take the entire top off of aluminum cans. So I did an entire re review and how to use the tool in a different video, and if you're interested in that, um, there'll be links in the description box to that video and also to my first video of the first uh, set of craft projects that I made. So today I'm going to be wrapping up some final craft projects that I made using this tool. And the interesting thing about it is that it leaves you with some different pieces of aluminum can than you would have if you normally, if you just cut up the can with a knife or scissors. And the thing I found is that the funnest part about it is that you have that intact top ring of the can. And there are a lot of things that you can build off of that uh, to make some different aluminum can projects than you could if you didn't have this tool. So let's get on with today's projects using the draft top or what I'm calling the craft top tool. So before I get started, here's a quick look at the tool itself. Um, this is the handle, you kind of squeeze this to take the top off, and then these are the wheels that kind of grab the, the can and take the top off. So I'm not going to demonstrate how to use this, I've done a whole video on how uh, to use the can opener and some, some of my thoughts and tips for using the can opener. So if you're interested in that, you can check the description box and that information will be in the, that video will be in, that, in the description box. But also, uh, before we get started, I just wanted to show you the two pieces of can that you're left with when you use the opener. So you can see that you've got this uh, nice clean opening in the can. And the ring part is what's really kind of been the most intriguing for me for a lot of these projects that I've made. So I do have three completed projects to show you today, but I'm going to show you some of my sort of projects that were sort of not totally terrible but that I didn't wasn't quite happy with so I made this shape sort of as a Christmas tree ornament uh, I used pop tabs at the top here and I think maybe it would have been better if I'd had an actually a round circle but I, I wasn't totally in love with this shape anyway uh, but I'm just showing you some different ways that you can shape the can the ring is in here obviously and this is based off of a shape that I used in video one which is just the ring with all of the little split pieces. So if you want to cut a can like this, I have a few uh, tips for that in the, in the first project video. But this was just another um, project that I kind of thought, oh, maybe I'll make a sun catcher or something. And I kind of wanted to layer it with some, you know, other cans, but it never came together really either. Um, I had this similar project where I just removed uh, one of the strips in this inside and I curled them up and glued them in sort of a ring. wasn't really sure what this was going to be either. I kind of thought maybe it could be sort of a candle holder shape or something like that, but it wasn't a project that I really felt like came together either. And the last thing I did, I wouldn't, I needed a lot more of these, but I kind of wanted to make sort of a ring kind of curtain. And these are just hooked together with some jewelry jump rings. And again, the project really kind of never formulated completely in my head, but uh, I thought it was sort of a fun idea. So let's move on from there. I just wanted to show you some of my other shapes that I created. And now let's get into the projects that I actually finished and am happy with. So my first project is just a delicate little Christmas ornament, I'm calling it. And it just utilizes the ring from the soda can and a little bit of the can itself to coil into this coil. And then I just hooked it together with some silver cording. So if you're interested in how to get the ring cut off, I did that in my first project video. And the only other thing you need to do is just cut a very, very thin 
strip of can around any length you want to coil up and put in the center of the ring. So this is a pretty simple project. Like I said, I've got my ring removed from the can here and I'll put links to that uh, first video in the description box as well. This is um, maybe not quite a full can that's just kind of spiral cut and I was lucky enough to find cans that had a plastic sleeve cover for their logo rather than uh, printed so I, I have a nice clean silver on both sides. The only thing is I cut this about twice as wide as I think I want it to finish. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a, this piece in half down the middle so I have a nice uh, more delicate uh, piece to spiral. I've got my strand of aluminum can cut to a good width now I think and I'm going to use some jewelry pliers to roll the coil. You can start fairly tightly and then kind of loosen it up as you go along. And the, the uh, aluminum is pretty forgiving so you don't have to worry about getting it perfect the first time around. But you want to have coils that kind of separate as you as they go around. So you want to have you want them to be looser and looser as you go around. And after you get a fairly good start, you can probably just roll it by hand. Until you get to a size and shape that you want to use for the inside of the aluminum can ring. Don't worry about it if you're kind of everything's moving around. You can secure it in a minute here. So that's about a good size. So I'm going to go ahead and trim the end off and then I'll probably have to kind of recoil it uh, and tie it off so that I can secure both of the ends. I have my shape roughly how I want it. I can do a little adjusting after I put the cord through, but I want to go ahead and just tie the piece together. So I'm going to go through the center of my coil and then just tie my ring here up at the top to secure it. Sorry about that, you kind of need three hands to do that. But anyway, I've just tied a double knot up here and you can see that my shape isn't as nice and uniform or as it was before. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull it to tighten it up and then I can go ahead and loosen the rings till I get them the way that I like them. Alright, so that's pretty good but now I have this long tail here so I need to trim it off but what I'm also going to do is I'm going to coil it up so that the uh, so that this doesn't pull out because you can see that it slides back and forth. So I want to keep it from sliding and coming apart. So I'm going to trim the end off here, leave about an inch, and then I'm just going to do a tight coil back over oops, back up to the knot so that I kind of lock this in place as well. You can kind of adjust it to get it right over the knot. And then all you need to do is just attach it to the ring and tie a loop and your Christmas ornament is finished. My next project is a really simple project. I'm going to make some more craft storage for my craft room. And to do that, I'm using two cans with the tap tops removed. I have the plastic rings from the cans, some 
tacky, putty, there's a lot of different brands, but basically you just want something that uh, you can stick to your walls, but that doesn't damage the wall. And uh, some command strip hooks. And I also have a pair of scissors. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put my cans back in the rings. This is sort of the tricky part. But with the top removed, you can put your hand all the way in there and kind of guide it around. You want to be a little careful so you're not smashing your can. There we go. And I want the pretty side facing out. So I'm going to put my other can in here. And then I want to have a hook left on here so I can hang it on the wall. So I'm just going to cut across the plastic here and here on both sides. So that I have a place to hang it on the wall. So you can use your command strip to put uh, this, hang this anywhere you want. And then the Loctite just goes on the back of the bottom of the cans, a little a bead of it, so that you can hold the cans more stably on the wall. So if you're hanging it this way uh, and you have something in one can, you don't want it swinging on the wall. So that's what this uh, putty is for. If you just put a small bit on the back and then press it into the wall, uh, your cans should hold you know, a fair amount of weight. I'm going to put pencils and some other tools in mine. So originally I was planning to paint these cans, but I was fortunate enough to find some cans that actually matched some of the crazy colors I already had in my craft room. So I decided just to leave them as they were since they matched my other tool storage frames that I'd made out of some cardboard a year or so ago. For my final project, I made a lamp and I'm making a couple of little lantern shades for it out of the aluminum cans. And to do that, I am going to cut the bottom out, take the top off, and then do the slits. So I've got a can here that is all taped and ready to be cut. If you're interested in a few tips on uh, taping the cans, I did that in my previous tutorial uh, in the first set of projects, so you can check out the link in the description box for that. But to do this particular thing, you want to follow the this order. You want to cut the bottom first. So I'm just going to slit the can carefully. You might want to wear gloves. And then I'm going to use my needle nose pliers just to kind of pull these edges out. You want to have a hole that just that your light bulb fits through but that isn't total you know isn't too big so you can see it's a little rough here but like I said I'm just going to kind of work with the knife scissors and uh, pliers to get a hole cut in the bottom of the can just like this one So there's my hole. I think it should be big enough as long as my light bulb fits through there. So let me just double check that. Yeah, so this should be fine. And it's rough, but your fingers aren't going to touch that part, so, every, so that's okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the draft top tool to take the top of the can off. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how to use this. Like I said, I did a review video where I talked about how to use the tool. Basically you just clamp it on there and twist it a few times. You can go back and forth or just all the way around.
And once you've got it fairly loose, you can just push it all the way out. So now I've got my bottom hole, my top hole, and I'm ready to go ahead and cut along all of the lines here. So I'm just going to use a nice sharp X-Acto knife. Get this stuff out of the way. And I've marked the bottom here because I don't want to cut all the way to the to the ends of the can. So I'm going to just cut to the curve here and to the tape here. And like I said, you want to be really careful and just cut kind of slowly. I like to start all of my slits because as you cut, the can loses some of its integrity. But if you work slowly, you should be able to get all the way around the can. Now, I'll just go back, but I'm going to go ahead and finish all of those. So once I've got my cuts started uh, all the way around, you can just go ahead and carefully cut along the tape. on both sides so that you have your can slit all the way around. So I'm going to stop when I get to the curve here where the can sort of tips back in and then I'll just go to my next slit. And like I said, as you cut more and more, the can loses a little more integrity so you do have to be patient and just try to cut slowly and not bend your can too much. So if you're holding the ends, that's where it still has some structure to it. So you should be able to cut slowly and get all your slits cut all the way around. So I'm going to stop and I'll be back when I have that done. So I've cut all the slits in my can and I should have mentioned earlier, but this can I made this, the slits are three eighths of an inch wide. In my first video, this, I, I did the cuts at a quarter inch, but these are a little bit wider. So um, I made all the slits and now I've put a piece of tape around the center of my can. This is the center line right here. And I'm going to go back and just cut the tape now so that I can open up the slits again. So I'm going to kind of push out the can a little bit and try to start to make the bends here, but I don't want to do anything real sharply yet. All right, so I want to make my folds nice and flat. So this is my center right here. Pretty sure. Remeasure it. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason I couldn't tell. The bottom right here is my center. So I'm going to line up my needle nose pliers on the tape and just make my fold. If you try to just bend these with your hand, you can't get a nice straight fold. So I'm just going to work my way around all the pieces and bend the can. And then I'll pull the tape off and shape the can and it'll be ready to put on my lamp. So here's the kooky little lamp that I made and the bulbs hold the lantern pieces on. So you can see that I have kind of a smaller bulb in here. I can get it out. There we go. So it, the bulb just goes through that bottom hole and you don't even see that ugly hole that you've made. And you do need it to be small enough of a bulb so that it'll fit in the ring of the can, but I just thought this was kind of a cute shape. You could also put uh, 
you know, use it in other ways. You wouldn't have to use it as a lantern, but you could hang them on your lights that you have outside, or there's a lot of different applications. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you back here in the lab soon.